that is, is very much central to the way that we are evaluating risk. I think that's one of the most important things that, that investors have to think about and how do you manage this whole concept and idea of risk. And to think about investing in, in businesses today that are not sustainable across, you know, our, you know, think about broadly speaking, ESG, you know, initiatives. Um, if you don't think about those things, I mean, you're, you're, you're about to waste a lot of money because they're just, you know, they're just not, it's just not a sustainable model. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Masterclass by President Summit, where we today will address the principles for excelling in the future of investing. And with us, we have none other than both the founder, chairman, and CEO of Vista Equity Partners and the man with the smartest glasses that I've seen in quite some time, <laughs> Robert Smith. Um, my name is Frederick. I'm the CEO of President Summit, and I can tell you just how pleased and excited I am to be back here for another episode of this fantastic Masterclass series um, as always, please do let us know where you're tuning in from in the world. I can see that we have Cyprus, we have Denmark, we have Stockholm, we have Hague, and we get so many others. And yeah, if you don't have any sound on, just click the picture right there. It should be uh, should be right on. Um, this is uh, this is the masterclass that we do every Wednesday for the next foreseeable future. We have a lot of very other interesting people. We have Linda Rottenberg, we have Carla Harris, we also have Mark Randolph, the co-founder and former CEO of Netflix. So we will continue to do this for many, many more weeks and very excited about welcoming these fantastic people as always. Um, this masterclass will be an hour. Robert and I have some questions prepared for you that we will address regarding investment, both the current state, but also the future state of investing. But, at all, but as always, you can ask any questions you might have in the Q&A section, and we will try to address as many of them as possible. And also, if uh, you agree or even disagree with some of the advice that Robert is giving or myself for that matter, please let us know in the chat section. We would love to engage with you. We would love to see your point of view of the things and uh, share any knowledge, any insights, any inspirations that can all help us move forward in this very, at the moment, very, very unpredictable world. Um, but I think without further ado, thank you to everyone tuning in. Uh, welcome to India, Copenhagen, all the places that you're tuning in from. And uh, a big, big welcome to you, Robert. How are you? Great, Frederick, and uh, so good to see you. Thank you for inviting me onto this this wonderful platform. Uh, I, I will be happy to share uh, insights and experiences, but I won't give any advice uh, for sure. But uh, I, it, it's so encouraging to see what you've built here and just to hear all of the people. You know, it's the beauty of technology from all around the world and wonderful places that, that I used to get to visit all the time and, and just itching to get to go again, uh, who are interested in hearing about investing, hearing about the world that, that I get to live in, which is a world of enterprise software and investing and that confluence of, of, of those, th those two uh, intersections and how it's really changing everything that we do. So again, thank you for inviting me and I'm excited to be here and share some time with you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here, Robert. And as always, uh, a huge thank you to everyone tuning in, because uh, if it weren't for all you guys tuning in, we, uh, we wouldn't be doing this. So uh, a huge, huge welcome. And I hope you have your notebooks and your uh, your questions ready. But without further ado, we have uh, we have a lot to cover, uh, Robert. We uh, we have to cover the principles uh, for excelling in the future of investing. But I think before we delve into all those insights, I want to know a little bit more about the man uh, that I'm speaking with right now, Robert, who um, who started out in Goldman Sachs, obviously a, a pretty known company around the world and especially within investment. But you uh, you then decided to uh, to build Vista Equity Partners. Mm -hmm. Why was that? So, I mean, we got to start actually before then. Um, you know, it, the, the, the one of the interesting aspects of our business today of investing uh, is our model of investing and what, what we do at Vista. You know, we, we are, you know, enterprise software investors that look to bring what we call best practices to enable our management teams to more effectively grow their businesses and more effectively scale their businesses uh, and to, you know, continue to expand uh, their profits. So, you know, growth at scale is, is one of the principal tenets that we focus on. Um, but if you go way back, I mean, my, my fundamental you know, background is in engineering. I was a chemical engineer. Yeah. And I've spent a number of years uh, traveling in many places uh, that you named already, you know, solving some process engineering problems. And to a great extent, you know, I call a fast forward, you know, Vista is a, a, a process engineered solution 
uh, to investing in enterprise software. And we'll, we'll be able to unpack that a little bit later. Uh, but that in essence is, is the construct. The, the, the original insight though, came from my process engineering days. Uh, this is at a time when I was actually, you know, actually at the plant, you know, working and, and yeah. implementing uh, computer solutions. We call them, you know, again, programmable logic controllers in, into uh, some, some process industries. And in doing that work, it created a massive amount of efficiency in the controlling of these systems. You know, you, you're too young to remember when we had uh, uh, chemical plants or, or manufacturing facilities that were done, you know, managed manually, where you literally had, you know, operators who were watching, you know, analog dials and this temperature went up or, or, or you know, pressures went up, they would make some adjustments on a dial. And so your, your, your process of control looks something like this, you know, big, a big, you know, wide sine wave with, you know, amplitude and, and, and frequency that was that was variable just in its very nature. Well, when you implement a, a software solution to that, you go from this sort of a, you know, signal to this sort of a signal, right? And so everything that you eliminated under that curve is all waste. And so, you know, the early stages of what software did was eliminate cost and cost reduction uh, for manufacturing, and then it went from manufacturing into the, you know, in, you know, the, the work environment, you know, the white collar environment, and all of a sudden, you're now starting to, to deal with, you know, process efficiencies with clerical work, uh, and process efficiencies with workflows, and then, then you started to implement it across vendors and ERP systems, so it just created a whole lot of efficiency in an overall marketplace, and a lot of people don't realize in the late, call it nine, early, you know, call it, you know, late 80s, early 90s, a lot of the efficiencies that the economy was actually uh, experiencing came from the implementation of computing power and computing technology into, into the workforce. Well, you know, today we're in a different place, and we'll talk about this in terms of the future of investing a little bit later. Sure. Today we're at a place where that computing power is, you know, ubiquitous. You know, it is, it is available everywhere, and the connectivity to that computing power as evidenced by these, you know, these little computers we run around with in our pockets and on our desktops, et cetera, uh, is accessible. And so you can actually bring that same level of productivity into almost every environment. Uh, and that's what this whole fourth industrial revolution is all about. So the early days uh, of Vista, in essence, were identifying that there's massive productivity that comes from enterprise software when introduced uh, into, you know, the business environment. Comma, however, most enterprise software companies actually weren't run that efficiently. Well, well, why was that? Well, they were, you know, developed by people like you and I, you know, who are someone who come up with an idea. Let me solve a problem. I write some code. I can sell it to some customers. But I'd never run a software company, you know, at that time, and, that, and people hadn't run them. So, where were they getting the shared knowledge and shared learning about how to run these businesses better? So, the the whole construct around the way we operated Vista was to you know create systems where best practices can be shared uh enhanced and evolved as the state of of enterprise software uh evolved as well so from 20 years ago when we focused on a lot of large legacy software companies where we were really driving specific you know operating improvements to reduce cost in the way that they you know went to market developed the yeah. product services you know, at the time you wouldn't remember this, but you know, you, you actually didn't have cloud-based computing. You literally send out a a, a a a disk, a DVD with your upgrades to thousands of customers over the weekend. They'd have to put it in and load it and upload the new software, and there'd be problems. Yeah. So you get thousands of calls back on that sort of stuff. But uh, to where we are today, which is you know more native cloud-based uh, uh, expressions, and that's where we started. It was you know how do we bring operational efficiency to enterprise software companies. And you pivot to today, and we'll get to this a little bit later, what we focus on are those businesses that have been, you know, native cloud or maybe some hybrid and have built some applications or some solutions. And now how do you approach that market at scale? Uh, and how do you enable them to go to market faster, develop the products more efficiently, you know, leverage, uh, I'll call it the intellectual property that resides throughout the planet uh, through centers of excellence to, to create uh, high efficiency in the way that they do their work every day. So, you know, from its origins, it was about how do you bring efficiency first to the enterprise software companies. Now we bring it, how do we bring efficiency to our overall network of now, you know, 68 software companies or so, you know, plus or minus every day uh, in the work that we do. 
That's a great intro. And uh, I see here that Ernst said hello from Germany, Robert P.E. Goat. I love that. I love that we have that, <laughs> in, that, level of in, that level of enthusiasm on these masterclasses. It. I love that. Uh, and please continue with all your, your wonderful comments. We've also already gotten a ton of questions, uh, which I can't wait to uh, to delve into. But thank you so much for uh, for the introduction there, uh, Robert. And um, it would also be interesting as we go along to, to learn a bit more about some of the challenges, some of the learnings and opportunities that you have gathered in your years, not only as an investor, but also, I mean, as an entrepreneur by starting up a company and all those things. 